Well, thank you for joining us. I'm Mary Yanez, Director of the Senior Adult Program, and of course, this is Mature Living. As you know, this year we celebrate our 25th anniversary of uh, putting on this weekly show uh, as Nancy Tharp, who is our risk manager at the Community College, just asked me, how long have you been doing this? And so it's good to remind everybody that we've been on the air for 25 years. Anyway, so let's talk about something really interesting. Nancy is a person that I go to when the college employees go to when we're uh, trying to find out about risk management and about, in particular, right now, falls. We're going to be talking about that. Uh, fall prevention and fall proofing our homes. Yes. Thank you for bringing this topic up. Oh, you're very welcome. My pleasure. I think our, our, our viewers are going to enjoy learning today. Okay. Well, there's so many reasons that you can fall. It can be improper lighting, it's too dark. It can be vision problems. Perhaps you need to have your eyes checked again. Yes. You need a new prescription for your glasses. Or sometimes as we get older, we develop cataracts, uh -huh. which makes it difficult to see. And we need to also address that. Another reason you can fall is because you've moved your furniture. Yes. Let's say I decided I wanted to move this table didn't like it here anymore, I'll move it somewhere else. My brain is still remembering the table where it was before because I've had it there for years. Yes. But now I've moved it, it's somewhere else, and I will have to be aware of Placement, that. Mm -hmm. yeah, furniture. Mm -hmm. and, and so you could stumble into it or... Yes, or you could. You know, yes. yes. Uh -huh. Sometimes um, we fall because we have uh, an injured uh, foot, knee, hip, and we don't account for that when we're walking. Um, not paying attention to where you're going. Mm. You know, everyone has their cell phones these days, and we're walking yes. around, texting, yes. not <laughs> paying attention. Including seniors. <laughs> yes, including seniors. Not paying attention to where we're going. Yes. yes. Oh, throw rugs is another thing that, oh, definitely. that has been brought up. Yes, ma'am. If you have a throw rug, chances are it's going to slip, and there's double-sided tape you can put to keep it down. I suggest getting rid of them unless okay. they have the gripping surface. Yes. And always watch because the corners are the first things that are going to curl up, and that will cause you to trip over your rugs. Um, you asked me a little bit ago, do you have a flashlight by your bed <laughs> in case of an emergency or the lights go out? Should we always have uh, oh, yes. some, some sort of lighting? Emergency lighting in every room. Okay. Because when the lights go out, you're not sure where you're going to be yes. if we have a power failure. That's good. And be sure that you keep your hallways clutter free. Okay. Sometimes That's an exit, isn't it? That oh, is. That boy. Is. <laughs> you teach us that here at the college. <laughs> Know where your exits are and how are you going to get out. Know and how you're going to get out and yes. make them clear and, and clutter-free. The other day I got home and the mailman was delivering a large box. And he was so nice to put it inside the door for me. And as he did, he said, be sure not to trip over that. Which yes. is very good. Yes, yes. yes. Always do that. Um, in your home, keep the items that you use in the kitchen or in the bathroom cabinets lower. Okay. So you don't have to get on a step stool to get something. Okay. Because yes. that can also cause you to fall. The things, things you use regularly, mm -hmm. uh, keep them in a lower shelf. Keep them on the lower shelf. Yeah. Yes. And in the bottom, keep them in a higher shelf. Yes. Maybe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Most definitely. Um, get exercise. It's amazing how just walking will help strengthen your legs. Yes. One of the things that we've learned in our exercise classes uh, for seniors, exercise to music, and the uh, the instructors uh, tell us is that when you exercise, you have a higher reach, and so you don't injure yourself because your muscles are used to reaching high, and so it, it prevents injuries yes, as well. It does. Exercise. Mm -hmm. Do a few push-ups off the kitchen counter. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> one. Yes, that yes. will help strengthen your arms. Um, medications. Sometimes that can cause you to be dizzy. And so you need to check with that. When you fulfill, uh, when you fill your prescriptions, ask your pharmacist if you are taking other medications, if they might contraindicate each other or cause dizziness or something like that. Even over-the-counter medications can cause you to be dizzy and oh, fall. 
Yes, so especially be careful. when you have colds. Yes, when we have a cold, medicine. we just go get whatever's off the shelf, and I think most of them say can cause dizziness. Yes. And please don't drive when you're doing that That's either. That's true. So many great things. Um, in the bathroom, yes, falls happen a lot, and one of the reasons is because our floors are rather slippery. After your shower, all the moisture is on the floor. Yes. Yes. It's steam. That's steam. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Makes it slippery. Okay. So be sure and have a mat there that is the, the slip proof type. And put the rubber mats inside your shower, inside your bathtub, so that you don't slip and fall in there. In there, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and that's so important. Uh, and they need to be washed every so often, but oh, that's okay too, definitely. you know, and uh, it's better to, to protect ourselves from a hospital visit right. or broken hip oh, or uh, yes. it just, uh, it, and you know, it, a fall can be devastating for a life, for a person because it could change your life drastically uh, and it affects the families as well. So we need to keep safe, right. safe, fall and proof. Fall proof and install handrails in your bathrooms. Yes. And I did that already, oh, so wonderful, I'm, I'm wonderful. kind of falling right into place. And they also have uh, the little hand suction cup uh -huh. rails okay. that work very well. But be sure and test it before you put all your weight on it. Uh, the, the ones that you install in, into your tile right. or to the wall are, are much safer and oh, secure. Oh, definitely, definitely. Footwear, you mentioned. Uh, what oh, do we do about yes. that? Oh, yes. Be sure that your soles of your shoes are slip resistant. Okay. Because sometimes we like those leather soles and they will slip very, very easily. Yeah, and many time boots that you yeah. wear in the yes, winter time, the I know, our leather. Oh. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. very good. These are great, great uh, uh, tips and, and good suggestions, Nancy, and we appreciate you as our risk manage <laughs> manager here at the community college, always trying to keep our employees safe, but we also want to keep our community safe. Is there a phone number they can call in case they want to oh, ask yes, a few questions? Oh, yes, yes. The area code's 915. My direct line is 831. 6444. That's a great 831 number. 831 can remember that pretty good. Uh, <laughs> and I'll be happy to help any woman. Yes, yes. A family member that might have an elder at home. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you can research it too, right? Yes. The Centers for Disease Control has some wonderful ideas and so do, does the National Institute of Health. Okay, super. Well, thank you for being with us and we'll be back with more Mature Living. We want to thank Nancy Tharp for being with us here on Mature Living. Thank you for staying with us. I know you're going to enjoy this conversation because we're going to give you uh, some very important information about bringing awareness uh, to brain injury. Uh, and during the month of March is 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 the right yes. the the brain injury awareness month. And each year, your organization, and of course, we have here Victor Rios, who's the president mm -hmm. of the uh, El Paso Brain Injury Support Group. And you've brought a good friend, Virginia Francis, also that is very active. Uh, you're a caregiver, um, also a mom. <laughs> and I know how important it is to you, to all of you, and to all of us in our community to support you in any way we can. Uh, let's talk about what you've been up to in, during the month of March already. Did you have a, a race uh, for awareness? Yes, we did. We had our race March 5th. It's, we're going to be trying to have it the first part of the month. That way it'll kick off the month of awareness of the brain injury. And um, it's yes. important that we encourage those who have suffered a brain injury and not only those persons that have suffered, but the community, their family, their friends around them. Because it doesn't affect that individual. It affects everybody around that person. Yes. And uh, it, plays such an intricate role into developing those those bonds, those those um, relationships. Relationships, thank you. And yes. it's important that we keep them and because there is a stress, there is a burden placed on those relationships and it's not something that is intentional. It just happens. Yes. And uh, people who aren't aware of this will put it off on that 
been injured person is that's their fault and burden the burden is on yeah. falls on you on the person that got injured exactly uh, and and of course uh, Francis gives another perspective you as a a person that had a brain injury how did, how did yours come about if I may ask well I suffered my brain injury when um, I was thrown 30 yards from a convertible Wow. I was in a coma for five weeks, in a wheelchair for two years. I was told I was never going to be able to walk, work, go to school, mm. and I've done all that. Yes, that's that, good news. That is very good news. <laughs> and um, her son as well has overcome yes. challenges. Yes. Tell us uh, a little bit about your situation, okay, well, Virginia. Well, my name's Virginia Francis, and, and I'm also part of the board. And the reason I started, you know, joining this sport was because of my son, Patrick Francis. He suffered a traumatic brain injury while playing football at the age of 13. And like Victor, he went through a lot of things. He was in a coma for two and a half months. He woke up four days before Thanksgiving. So that was a big celebration. And, and that's how we started, you know, a celebration here in El Paso that it's called Light Up the Heavens. Oh, I like that. <laughs> yes, That's uh -huh. a great title That's for your... That's the reason, because we started... There, actually, it started in a little town to, uh, in 2014. It was a family that decided to bring awareness to, the, you know, to their community uh, by lighting up the heavens. It is called Light Up the Heavens, and now it's celebrated worldwide, but wow. it had never been celebrated here in El Paso. But uh, with the El Paso Brain Injury Support Group help, and then Victor and all the board members, we were able to accomplish that dream that Patrick had to start Light Up the Heavens yes. in El Paso. Tell right. me a little bit about what you're planning uh, on March 31st, which is uh, the last day of March. Okay. A big so like, like Victor mentioned, we did have a race March 5th, and uh, every year it's more and more successful, and we do want to thank the community and our sponsors. and. Um, March 31st, we'll be having the Light of the Heavens at the beautiful Desert Botanical Gardens of Tonopah. It's very nice. It's okay. beautiful. That's where we ended up the race, too, and, and it came out really nice. So, again, we're going to be celebrating uh, Light of the Heavens. And Light of the Heavens is mainly to ce celebrate all the brain injury survivors and to honor the ones that have, have been taken. Uh, Victor, tell me what you're seeing for that day. What's your vision? Well, I would really be encouraged to get community participation and acknowledging that, that brain injury can occur to anybody. I mean, falling out of bed when you're asleep can cause brain injury. Uh, concussion, that movie that just was released about football players. Yes. They can suffer brain injuries. The Veterans coming back from the Gulf Wars, yes. they're suffering brain injuries. It's something that's becoming more and more prevalent. And for a long time, this, this has gone under the radar, if you will, because awareness was not brought to it. And that's what our group is trying to do, is mm -hmm. bring awareness to educate people and how to proceed forward. Yes. Not say back or put blame or Yes. make excuses but to move forward oh, yes. to progress uh, we just talked about maybe an idea that we could uh, bring up what do you think yes uh, we were coming up with ideas being that it's going to be at the beautiful botanical gardens again and i'm going to give you the address and the time the address and the time the address at the botanical gardens is 4220 donovan and the zip code is 79922 and the time will start at seven because we need to be there before it gets dark because once it gets dark, we're gonna light up the heavens. <laughs> and uh, we were thinking of maybe having a parade of lights, green yes. lights, because green is for brain injury awareness. So maybe green we can lights. have green lights mm. and um, light up the heavens that way and then be wearing the neon green necklaces and the glow sticks and, and maybe hats. And it's it's just, you just have Kinda to remember. Kind of like the Christmas <laughs> parade of lights. <laughs> green. And it's cold in that. Uh -huh. and, and Christmas to do the so parade, but be they have beautiful. a yeah. So we can do it's very so cool. within we the garden. Invite so. everybody exactly. to join us, please, because uh, like Victor was saying, there's so many people that have suffered brain injuries, and we do want them to come. And you know, we want to show them that there is hope. Like 
like my son Patrick and Victor, they've gone a long way, and we we know a lot of survivors exactly. that have gone a long way. So we just want to let everybody know that there is hope and there's miracles. Hopefully, you'll expect. We'll Are music. you gonna have entertainment? Yes, we're gonna have music. Like uh, at the races, we had uh, two bands. Okay. Uh, the the nice. there's there's a band that are you going to be charging or anything? Or is it going to be a fundraiser or anything like that? Well, for there that is day? a fee for the for the botanical gardens, but uh -huh. we'll see. Right now, we're, Sponsors since it's barely maybe? you know we're barely getting planning. everything together, planning. So so we'll let you know. And, and I just wanted to mention we do have a Facebook page. Oh yes. Uh huh. Uh -huh. And the page uh, it's Brain Injury Support Group of El Paso That's County. Right. Okay. That's our Facebook, and uh, I'll, we'll be posting a lot of information on it. And pictures. Yeah, and pictures, and pictures. exactly. And <laughs> well, we racing. certainly hope you have a, a, a great event. Of Thank course, you. right now we're in the smack in the middle of March, exactly. and so um, we wish you well, and, and we hope a lot of celebrities go over there and join <laughs> you uh, in their goofy, <laughs> lighted up hats or whatever you can dream up, right? Yes, exactly. it's gonna be it'll good be fun. Too. It's gonna be a fun time, and then you know we're gonna be bringing awareness to the, our community, all the people <laughs> that support you, right? Exactly. Yes, so good. Well, best wishes to all of you uh, in the in the support group. And we certainly hope you have a great celebration. And Thank you. Wear green that day. <laughs> exactly. Thank My you very color. much. <laughs> Thank you. March 31st. March 31st. And we'll be back with more guests uh, celebrating other things and important conversations. One of the most admirable people in my eyes and in the eyes of many of this community is Mary Scott, who is an artist. She is a friend, she has a big heart. And Mary Scott uh, is a former professor at the El Paso Community College and one of the founders of the Empty Bowls program, which has been going on for 12 years now. And it is a great benefit to to this community, and so I'd like to reintroduce you to Mary Scott, who is with us. And we're gonna talk a little bit about the artist, Mary Scott the artist, and her clay. Thank you for being with us, uh, oh, Mary. Mary. Like, And I mean it, I, I admire you so much, uh, and many of, of the people here at the college and in this community that you've touched with the Empty Bowls Project. Tell me a little bit about the, the beginnings. Well, I'm, I'm, you know, as an artist, uh, I think Empty Bowls started in my heart when I was in graduate school in Lubbock. And uh, there I worked with uh, various groups, uh, well, students, like high school students, and we built sculptures as an expression of uh, working from our hearts. Yes. And, and uh, sometimes we used clay, sometimes we used other materials, but well, like one of the sculptures was nine feet by nine feet by nine feet. It was, and we had one morning to get it, to, of course we did preparations before other weeks, but one morning to finish that, that huge that sculpture. A huge and, it, and it was, it was wonderful. So uh, one of the things I thought about was making some kind of a, uh, like a dinner that would involve the people from the community and they could come and they could make the, what they would eat out of. And, and uh, it was real complicated and all that. And, and, but when I got back to El Paso and I started, well, first, I, one of the things that also influenced uh, making Empty Bowls El Paso was uh, with my friends, uh, Delia and, and uh, Alicia, what we did was we made a, a, a poco a poco Center for Arts and Wholeness. And we gave workshops for people. And we also, with, in, with El Paso Community College, brought Juan Quesada, his family. Now, he didn't come that time. His family and the potters of Mato Ortiz. And they are part of the heart of this in the sense that uh, watching them work showed me the way that I could make uh, this, uh, this opportunity for people very easy to yes. accomplish. Yes, and, and there's a process. Right. And you developed this process so that people that have never made a piece of art out of out of uh, clay can do it. That's right. And, and that's what I love about it, is that we can all get involved. That, that's what, and that I think is important, 
the, you know, the money from Empty Bowls El Paso goes to help people who are hungry. But the workshops, all the workshops we've done, we've probably done at least 50 workshops since last April. So we've done lots of workshops, but that's to nourish the heart and soul of people. The making of the bowls and the glazing of the bowls gives that kind of nourishment to people too and, that and are I making think that's them. real yes I think that that's are real making the, these beautiful bowls and I had the privilege of attending one of your workshops at the college many years ago by the way and I made a bowl for myself and I as you can see these are just beautiful bowls and I made one in memory of my mother and so uh, you know at that time she was still uh, with us but she's passed since passed so I still have my bowl I didn't bring it with me but these are just beautiful pieces. Of, now this is the end result, but let's right. talk about how it begins. Well, let's talk about that, how it begins. I learned this method. I watched the potters of Mata Ortiz work, and so then I, we would cut up the clay. So here's the clay. This is the beginning. And oh, uh, let's see what it looks like and what it feels like, too. Right, yeah, and so everybody gets a piece of clay. It's about that big, and then they get a couple of Styrofoam bowls, such simple tools. All right. And with when the clay comes wrapped up with one of the tools, and that is this plastic right here. So this right is here. the beginning, and it's cool, right? And it's wrapped because we don't want it to dry up, and then we form it. Right. And, and you know, one of the things that was important about Juan Quesada is when he was a young man, he uh, he wanted to stay home, but he couldn't. There were no jobs in Matortis and Casas Grandes nearby. So he worked the railroads. When he come home, he he went out in the Pakime. He found the ancient pottery shards, and he figured out how to make things. Oh. And they made a song about him eventually in a children's biography. And they said, "Well, what are you? How, how does he do this?" And he said, "Well, you know, clay and dishes go together. Why? Because of food." And so, well, what do you want for breakfast? How about a gordita? And you have to do it this fast because we're depending on the moisture in the clay and that. That's a nice gringa gordita. Yeah. It works really well. And then you put it down. There's your piece of plastic, and it goes right in here. There's the bottom. And then what are you going to have in your gordita? Well, you're going to have chorizos. Okay, so <laughs> one, two, three, that's all you can do. Oh. And you've got your chorizo, and it comes in the bowl, too. And the, the, the chorizos make the wall. Oh. And then it ends up like this. After you yes. massage it and press it with right. your right. loving yes. fingers, because it's a spiritual kind of a feeling also when you're touching earth and the clay. Yes, and, and then you're going to take the richness from inside of yourself and imprint it on the inside of the bowl. And usually, most of the tools that we use are found <coughs> objects, like, let me move this bowl and use this bigger bowl. Just these are all things that very various people have donated, or you can see, oh, and this this one, this little broken bell is wonderful tool, and you just, each person, I don't think and there's ever been two bowls alike, and you just imprint the design in the, in the inside of the bowl to represent your richness and, yes. well, the richness that we all have. And then, then you take this off and you turn it over and you write on there your name and empty the bowls, El Paso. Maybe, yeah. But when you pull this off, when you pull this plastic off, what you're going to have is a little mountain. And yes. then you have the arroyos running down. And that's oh. how the clay comes to us. The clay itself starts up high, pure as can be, and then it starts being uh, washed down and blown down by the wind and stuff like that and it comes down, and this clay is down by the river, and all these are, so this is the symbol of the clay, and of the earth itself that the clay comes from. So uh, you can see on um, some of these bowls, some of them it shows up more, and some of it, like see, you can see all those arroyos, you see them? Yes, beautiful yes, it's just, markings, it's, natural markings. Yes, it's a symbolic way yes. of, of recognizing the clay in ourselves, because you know, we're made of clay. Yes. We, we have a lot in common with clay, including our stubbornness. <laughs> that they have to mold us <laughs> yes, right, to make us right. look better and act better. And that is such a beautiful process. How many thousands of pounds of 
of clay have you processed over 12 years and hundreds and maybe thousands of, of volunteers? Well, yes, because there are so many, many, many people all over El Paso County have made bowls. Some people have come to workshops more than once, but many, many people have just come, you know, one time where like, or, or, or two, like a couple of years I spent time at Anthony High School and we made bowls. Another time it was the mother's daughters from Fabens. So it's, uh, it, you know, it's all over. This, this time it was fantastic to work with the Scouts of Socorro and uh, the Horizon City Girl Scouts that we had never worked with them before. And then on the other extreme, the Franklin High School students that helped us with Ronald McDonald House where we had a, had a workshop. That, I mean, it's all it's the, the Women's Club of El Paso. There's just, it's so, so many different people who have helped, who have donated their time and their, their talents. And, yes. and so the, oh, but anyway, so how yeah. many tons of clay have we gone through? This year we've gone through, I would say, real close to half a ton, a thousand pounds. We've, wow. well, m more than a thousand pounds actually, when I think about the outlying line stuff. So, yes. So then if you talk about that, that's so something like six th tons of clay in a sense and yes. that we've used all to, together. To, to feed the hungry, to help with food banks uh, right. in, in this community, uh, to raise money and to be a part of raising that money to help others. Yes. I wanted to tell you a little oh, bit more about this. Yeah, let's this continue with our process. Because, well, after you get the design stamped in it, then we get it dried and we put it in the kiln, and it comes out like this, oh. white. You know, and that's another, what does fire do? Yes. You know, and sure. what does suffering do, in a sense? Uh, the Purifies. fire, it's, and th with this clay body, it turns white, so it's like purifying it, but it, you feel it, you see, in it's comparison, rough. how, yes. how it's strong now. It's, it's very it's strong. strong. And so then, and then after that, we put the glaze on, which I didn't bring a piece that it just has uh -huh. unfired glaze on it, but uh, that's all right. It, so the glaze then gives it the color, depending and, on? Yes, we put, we choose what color we're going to put on it and how we're going to apply it. And so we use cords. You use your your fingers right. and, and you mold. And what I was talking to a friend of mine that um, uh, she just she thought she wanted to help because she wanted to help feed the hungry. But she had no belief in herself. And she came to a workshop and said, I'll help. I'll, you know, I'll pack or whatever. And I said, oh, no, you're going to make a, war, a, a bowl. And now she can teach people how to make bowls. Oh, and this year, this is new for this year, the hearts. Because at the heart of Empty Bowls El Paso is feeding the hungry and feeding the souls of people that, through art. Because art, art gives life. Art makes life. Yes. So yeah, if you come to Empty Bowls this year, which when is it? It's April 9th. It's on Saturday, April 9th from 11 to 3 at the El Paso Community College yes. uh, A building at, on Viscount. But you'll see some of these hearts too. Beautiful. So. And that's where you can donate and you can buy a bowl oh, at wait, that yes, point. Yes, and there's all, those, all the good things that go with that celebration. It is really a celebration with music and everything. Yes, that is so good. And of course, we we'll have future conversations with you. I thank you so very, very so much. Thank you, Mary, for being you. Thank you for your support and for your encouragement. God bless you.